as many user defines on the main screen. Although, uh, for the instance, the code category, you can't label the the label. The label is called category, but you can kind of you can well, you can kind of you can define what it is that you want to store there that would help you analyze or separate or group together for reporting the classes that you're running. Uh, Cochar, uh, it's a that is completely definable. You can relabel uh, the tag on it, and the coordinator field. Coordinator field has a um, default label, which would be the course coordinator who's the staff member responsible for the class. If you say there's only one of us, and so I want to use it for something else, go for it. You can relabel that and uh, assign whatever value to it. And again, don't forget the user-defined fields that are available on the course. Register. There we go. Register. Again, on the main screen, really a couple of codes. A registration code and the miscellaneous code. Um, again, uh, smaller space-wise fields, uh, but those are ones you can modify. Uh, one of the new features, and I don't have a shout out on this is that remember on the status code field you can now make that um, open entry and non validated and uh, we'll talk the business but you know the advantages disadvantage of open entry and validated and uh, well I, and, and I can discuss that if there's some questions on that down the road I think I'll, I'll pass on that right now when we're talking about user-defined fields um, in the additional info area, there are 20 on the name record. Um, we talked about credential. This is that credential area where you can create categories of records and add as many as you want for a person. On the register screen, you've got additional info. Again, 16 user-defined fields. And then on the course side, uh, there are, again, 20 user-defined fields, uh, no, 16 on the on the course side. So again, uh, options for you in terms of where to store your data. Uh, adding codes. All right, so we know where the codes are. How do we put in a code that we can pick from uh, on validated code areas? And, and I, I guess I am want to I am want to go back on this. When we say validated, the distinction between a validated and unvalidated is that a validated field, you can only enter or select something that is provided for you in a dropdown. So again, if I decided I wanted to call this a, a fish, I'm going to look down here. We have no fish codes for this particular occupation. So if I try to type fish in here, FI, I can't do that. Uh, open entry code. An open entry code, I can type whatever I want. I can call this fish. I can call this chicken. I can call this vegetarian. If I could spell it. But again, open entry field, uh, type anything you want in there. Now, for codes that are validated, the primary method is to go to module codes and pick the code you want. Uh, enter it, and now that make it active, and that code will be in the drop-down list the next time you bring up that record. Method number two is that if you have permission to add codes, and this has to do with your user access level as set up by your student manager administrator, the plus sign is there, and you can add a code on the fly. And again, opens up the code editor, and that allows you to to enter in codes. Now, let's go back to the live system and kind of go through that. So, uh, if we wanted to add a new interest code through the normal add edit process, we'd go to reports, add edit codes, uh, go to the universal code editor, click the drop down, it's alphabetized by the file, so we go course, fees, financial aid, firm, ledger, there's name and we're looking for interest codes. Say so now we've got the interest codes. I can add a code 
I can find to see if I've got fish in my code set. I don't. So if I wanted to add fish for a code, if I is H, if any kind. Okay. Uh, I guess I should. I guess most fish have fins. Uh, and I could make it active. And if you have Ace Web, you need to decide, is this a code that you want to put on your Ace Web pages for people to uh, sign up for or not? And if you're using uh, scoping, do you want to do any particular scope on this? Is this just for adult programs? We're going to fish them or not? Or uh, going to leave it open kind of for everybody? Hit the OK button. And now when we go back to the name record uh, and we go to the list, and I've got to there's there's the there's the fish the general one if any kind it's it's in the list okay um, the editing codes now this is something uh, putting the codes in is one thing but the codes change you, there's a reason why you might want to change fish to uh, to aquatic or or uh, seafood instead of fish or uh, I, I don't know what else you call fish. Um, so if you wanted to do that then, and we go back to the code editor and find the one we're looking for. Uh, when you start to edit a code, uh, one of the biggest mistakes people made is that they'll get to the code area and they say, well, I need to add a new code of a bird. Now, if you start to edit an existing code, you know that you're in edit mode when it warns you, hey, Bozo, this will change all the references. Are you sure you want to do this? And what that would do is that all those fish that you've coded in there, bass and halibut and salmon, would suddenly be called birds. And people would look at you really kind of funny when you come up with Mr. Salmon and it says he's a bird. Anyway. So that is something to pay attention to. If you're going to edit a code, the edit system will automatically change that code on any people that have been assigned that code to the new value for the code. Sometimes you want that. Sometimes you don't. If you really had intended to keep fish and add a new code of bird, you want to, oh, no, no, no. We don't want to do that. And you would click Add to then add the code of bird, and then you're on your way. Uh, so again, pay attention to the adding versus editing piece. All right, so again, as we said, if you've got codes, what are you going to do? You need to report them. Um, there are several areas where you can get lists of the codes themselves. Under the reporting codes, there are uh, reports where basically it'll just print out a list of the codes in each of the different areas for kind of a reference. Um, one of the other ways, and uh, the way that I like actually, so the code reporting will just give you a list of all the codes that you have created, OK? What I like is to go into, for names or courses, go into names at the statistical report. So if I said, I want to look at occupational codes of my students and see what ones are in the database, I'll run a statistical report on them. Summary report, OK. And I want to run all names just to see what codes are out there. We're going to skip the money because we're not referencing the payments. So this particular statistical report tells me how many people in my database have a um, have that particular code on their name record. And so again, dog, educator, I don't have any fishes. I don't have any birds in this list. But that will tell you the codes that are in the system as far as reporting. 